Hey seventh graders, fun little easy activity for you guys today. It's called the Animal Population Dice Game. Obviously, if you guys are watching this, you found the video, but also you guys are my at-home kids today, so you guys are doing this at home by yourself. Your guys' learning target is I can model how deaths and births influence the size of a population. So this activity is pretty similar to what you guys did on the 1.2 and 1.3 populations assignment where you guys used the little yellow tokens or the little yellow circles on that chart. Okay, um, but the difference with this is you guys got to choose on that one how many births and deaths you had to basically accomplish a mission of either keeping your population the same, increasing it, or decreasing. But in this activity, you guys don't get to choose, okay? You're gonna let luck choose for you. And we, we're we gonna basically see what happens overall in our population, okay? So here's your guys' directions. So for this activity, you guys are gonna start with an animal population of 10. You guys can assume whatever animal you want. At the end, you guys will kind of have a creative little opportunity to write a story about those animals. Um, but for right now, we're just going to assume a population animal of or an animal population of 10. Okay, so obviously you're not working with a partner, so you can kind of ignore that part. And you guys will be given four dice. In your guys' case, you won't necessarily have colored dice. Okay, so uh, you guys are going to roll your dice, and then I'll show you guys here in a second what is going to represent births and what's going to represent deaths. So two of your dice will represent the number of individuals in that population being born, and the other one's going to be how many are dying in that population each year. You're going to fill out the data table and calculate the total population for the last column. Remember, you guys are starting with a population of 10. Then you guys will graph your numbers with years on the x-axis and population numbers on the y-axis. And then you're going to make sure you put a title on your x-axis, your y-axis, and then an overall chart title. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you guys your dice that you are going to be using at home. So right-click this link and open link. It will pop this little screen up for you guys. I told you guys that I would give you four dice, but you notice that there's only one dice here. So I want you guys to click this little teal colored square one, two, three times. Now you have four dice, okay? Your top two dice will be your number of births and your top, uh, excuse me, your bottom two dice will be your number of deaths, okay? So let's go ahead and look at our next screen. This is your guys' data table. And note that year zero, um, we're not going to consider any births or deaths. This is kind of like your baseline. So you guys are starting with a population of 10. You guys will collect data for year one. So you'll go into your dice roller. You'll click roll. Again, your top are going to be your number of births. Your bottom are your number of deaths. So it looks like we have 11 births. So I'm going to go ahead in here and include 11 births. And your deaths are the two bottom dice. Looks like we have a total of five. You guys will get your own data for this. I'm just showing you an example. And then we're gonna look at our population size. So our population started out at 10 and it increased by 11 individuals. So we're at 21, but five of them died. Okay, so 21 minus five is 16. So at the end of year one, you had 16 animals in that population, okay? And you're gonna, you guys are gonna keep doing this 10 times. So you're gonna roll your dice. Your top are your bursts, looks like 11 again. Your bottom are your deaths, so 11. And it looks like I had nine for this one. So 16 plus 11 is 27, minus nine is 18, okay? All right, so you're gonna go ahead and keep collecting data for 10 years. And then you guys are going to need to graph it. Um, let me talk really quick about this. There might be an instance that you guys roll more deaths than births, and you do that several times, it's just all kind of probability chance, okay? And you guys might decrease to zero, okay? You guys might even go negative. If that's the case, I just want you guys to keep your population size at one, okay? So if you guys hit a point where you guys have a population size of zero or lower, negative, okay, you guys can just ignore that, keep your population size at one, and then that way you guys kind of always indicate that you have some, some individual left there to build. It might be maybe things that we're not considering like immigration or emigration. So maybe another animal moved into that population and that's gonna be what keeps propagating our pop propagation when we have all of these other animals dying, okay? So keep that in mind. If you guys hit a point where you're at zero or negative, um, a negative number, you guys just go ahead and keep your population size at one. It's gonna be one brave individual that migrated in. All right, 
So here is your guys' graph for this. We're going to go ahead and set our x-axis as our years. So you're going to want to title your x-axis years. And we started it at zero, so you guys are going to label your x-axis as well. Um, you guys have enough room on this to do every other line is going to be a year. So this can be year one, year two. I'm only going to do part of this because I only collected dice to show you guys for two years. So I'm really only going to do about that much. Um, you're not going to want to graph this until you're done collecting all your data because you're not sure necessarily how large your population grows. It might stay um, around 10. It might be at one the whole time. It might be uh, 30, okay? So whatever your guys' highest number is for your population size is probably gonna be pretty close to what you guys wanna do by this. I would maybe go by twos or by fives or by tens just depending on how big it gets. I have about, let's see here, we can go, just to be safe, we can maybe go by fives. But again, yours might look a little bit different than mine. 10, 15, obviously mine only went up to about 15 at the highest. So you guys, again, can just judge based on what data you guys collected. So don't do the same as mine if you guys don't go clear up to 30, okay? You guys can keep it between, all right, well, the highest I had was my starting population of 10. So maybe the highest you go here is 10. That's up to you guys, but you guys wanna kind of zoom in on your chart a little bit more. Okay, I of course didn't go that high, um, but I'm gonna look back and say, all right, my first year I had a total of 16. So we started with 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, year zero, I was at 10. Year one, I was at 16. So maybe like right there. I'm gonna connect that line, little game of connect the dots. And then at year two, I was at 18, so I increased a little bit more there. So I would go up to, here's your two, about 18, roughly. You guys can change the thickness on your dots if you want as well. And then you guys are gonna continue graphing for your uh, the rest of your guys' 10 years. So what did we do for the chart title? So make sure you guys have years on your x-axis. And then you have your population numbers. Um, you're gonna tell me what animals you guys have. Population numbers of what? Okay, and then finally, you guys need to do this part right here, which is your graph title. You guys can just click and type um, for all three of these titles. But you guys remember that when you choose a graph title, you want something that reflects both your X and your Y axis. So we have a population number here of whatever animals you choose. Um, we have the number of years here. So use those two pieces of information to help you guys come up with a title that explains both the number of years and how big your population is. It might be a growth of a population of wildebeest over 10 years. Okay, uh, how a population changes size over 10 years. Whatever the case, that's up to you guys to decide, okay? So make sure you guys do that as well. And then you guys obviously will come up with your own numbers for your dice game. And then finally, you have some questions to answer. So here's these three questions here. So overall, did the popu population of your animal increase, decrease, or stay the same? If you guys started with 10, but you ended with 11, okay, that's pretty close. Okay, even if you started with 10 and you ended up with eight, that's still pretty close to your guys' same, okay? Um, and then, you know, maybe you guys jumped up by 40 individuals. Maybe you guys were at one the whole time. Okay, so really use your best judgment. Just because I say it stays the same doesn't mean it's the exact same number. Okay, when I say increase, it doesn't mean, oh, it went up by one. It has to go up by a lot more than one. So kind of think on an average perspective. What's your average or your overall? Okay, same with this. Uh, overall, were there more births than deaths? Deaths than births? Or did your births and deaths stay about the same? So what do you guys think about that? And then finally, other than births and deaths, what else do you think could change the size of a population? So this is a great one because I always have kids answer this similarly. They could say, oh, disease. Disease came into this population, but isn't that death? Wouldn't disease kill someone? Okay, so other than births and deaths, what else do you think could change the size of a population? So think outside of things that make something be born or make something die. Okay, and then finally, this is my fun little part of this, is write a story about your animal. So think about what animal population you guys could have. Look back at your graph and look at that 10 year span. What happened from year one to two that made your population increase? What happened from year four to five that made your guys' population decrease? So use your imagination 
to really kind of give me a story about what happened to this animal population over 10 years. It could be a fictional animal population. You guys could make up a flock of justy birds or dodo birds or crawfit birds or however you guys want to describe it. Okay, that is up to you guys. Have some fun with it. Be creative. Um, but really account for all those little changes that you saw in your population over 10 years. Okay, and like I said, have fun with that. That's it for your guys' assignment today. Um, when you're done, obviously, you guys can turn this in. And I hope you guys had fun with it and you guys learned something. And I hope you're having a great day.